Today, we're gonna to be talking about the inverted row. We're gonna dive into the how-to, why it's so great, some variations, and how to program the movement. So now let's dive into the three steps to the perfect inverted row. Step one, nailing the setup. So if you're in a commercial gym, look for a Smith machine or a squat rack. I would highly recommend going for a Smith machine. The bar is not gonna move as much. Plus you don't have to take up a full squat rack to do an inverted row. So now when getting set up, if you have a rack similar to ours and you have to adjust the barbell or if you're in a Smith machine for that matter, the best way to scale your height is to lay on the ground Set your positioning as if you were gonna inverted row and reach up the hands. Ideally, you want a full arm's length width to where you can comfortably grab, but then when you lift slowly, you're not gonna be bumping the ground throughout every rep during the eccentric. So when you pull up and you lower, you're just hovering above the ground, you're not having to reach too far to grab the barbell, and you're not hitting the ground on the way down. Now that you've nailed your setup, it's time to head into step two, which is getting your feet length from the barbell and your grip width. So if your feet are farther from the barbell, you're gonna be doing a higher row. So you're gonna be hitting more of the upper chest area with the barbell. That's gonna be a little bit more engaging for the upper back. If your feet are closer and you're a little bit more under the barbell, let's say with the pec area, then you're gonna be rowing and engaging more of the lats and hitting a little bit more in the lower pec and sternum area. When it comes to grip width, there's really no one size fits all for everybody, but the best way to think about it and the best way to kind of start and scale your grip then after is to think about using a similar grip to your barbell row grip. For many, that's gonna be just outside of shoulder width and that usually translates pretty well for the inverted row. So if you look at how I'm gonna be set up, I'm gonna set up to where my lower chest is gonna be hitting the barbell and my grip width is just outside shoulder width and very similar to what I'd be doing more of a traditional barbell row width. Step three, setting the back and initiating the row. So now that we have our positioning, one thing to note before actually initiating the row itself is to somewhat retract the scap. So similar how we do in a pull up and chin up, how we pack those scaps down and engage the upper back. We're gonna do the same thing for an inverted row. We're gonna initiating, thinking about driving the elbows to the floor and we are gonna try to get our chest as high as we can to the barbell. One important cue to remember is to lead with the chest and not with the hips. So you don't want your hips extended up and trying to row. That's gonna shift your mechanics. So lead with the chest. Now it's important to note that most folks will benefit with putting a squat pad on the bar and making contact there. For a lot of folks getting all the way to the bar with the chest is a little bit uncomfortable and doing so with the pad kind of limits that extra range of motion that limits a lot of folks from performing this movement with any form of discomfort. Three benefits of the inverted row and why you should perform them in your program. Number one is it is a great variation for beginner, intermediate, and advanced athletes. This is a very easy movement to scale, and no matter what level of fitness you are, you can probably find a variation that's challenging for you. Advanced athletes can add weight, while beginners can scale by bending their legs and making their leverage a little bit easier or bringing the barbell down. The second benefit is that this movement is great for just adding additional volume on your pulling days. It's not a very very high impact movement so it's not going to incredibly stress the joints and the body so if you want additional volume especially for hypertrophy purposes this movement is awesome number three is it's a pretty low committal movement when it comes to equipment yeah you need a smith machine a squat rack but you can also find other implements to pull yourself up on you don't need a ton to perform this movement so if you're on the go and you're traveling you can perform inverted rows pretty much everywhere you go assuming you have something to pull your body up on so programming the inverted row, let's talk about some practices that you could put into your program. Number one, you can use it as a warm up for your pulling day. So let's say you have some big deadlifts coming or you just wanna kinda of get your lats engaged for the day of pulling that you have programmed for yourself. You can use the inverted row and some of its modifications as a warm up. You can use it as just a normal pulling variation, so as an accessory, and you could structure your sets and reps based off of the goal you're going for. Obviously, if you're going for more of a strength focus, decrease the reps, make these a little bit tougher. You can add in tempos, you can add in pauses, and so forth. If you wanna go for hypertrophy, you can add in tempo and increase the reps just to really get that total time under tension increased. You can also use it as a finisher. So one way I like to program the inverted row at the end of workouts when I'm really trying to get one of my clients fatigued when it comes to their pulling variations is I'll do like, let's say a chest supported row or a dumbbell row and I'll couple it with an inverted row. So you have a more of a weight loaded movement with a more body weight friendly movement. And that's a great way to just kind of accrue that extra volume that you want for the pulling muscles. 
All right, so now let's chat on some of the variations you can use with the inverted row. I'm gonna break this section into three different subgroups. Number one, we're gonna talk about muscles used based off of how you're positioning yourself. Number two, we're gonna talk about different variations that multiple fitness levels can use. And then number three, we're gonna talk about different ways and different implements you can use to perform the inverted row. So number one, how can you change the kind of pulling mechanics based off of your positioning? So look at the feet. If you bring the feet closer to the barbell, you're gonna be getting a row that is much lower on the chest. That's gonna be a lot more engaging for the lats and more that mid-back area. If you scoot your feet further away from the barbell, so where the eyes are a little bit more under the bar, obviously they're gonna be a little bit behind it, but the point still stands, you're gonna be pulling more for the upper back. Now, one thing to note is that if you are trying to go for the upper back and you're positioning yourself further away from the barbell in terms of your feet, you may not be able to row as high, that's totally fine. Don't force a range of motion just because that's what you think you need to do. Row to your fullest extent, engage the upper back, and then lower yourself as normal. All right, so now let's chat on variations for different fitness levels. Beginners, you can bend the legs, so bring your feet in a little bit and then bend the legs. Think about like a 90 degrees to like 110 degrees of knee flexion, and then you can lift accordingly. That's gonna decrease the amount of weight you need to pull. Now, intermediates. You can keep your feet standard, similar to how we did in the tutorial portion of this movement, and you could add in tempos. I think tempos are a great way for intermediates to kind of get a full grasp on doing this movement correctly, but also just strengthening the musculature needed to perform the inverted row correctly. Advanced athletes, you can bring your feet up on a bench so it's more of a true horizontal adduction movement, and you could even add weight to your chest. My recommendation is Wait until you feel fully confident in your abilities before adding weight. Obviously a weighted vest is a little bit better. It's gonna feel a little bit more comfortable, but you can add a bumper plate if it feels accommodating for what you wanna get accomplished under the bar. The third way you can create variation with the inverted row is by using different implements. So one of the most popular options out there is using the TRX. That's gonna be really useful for those folks who have shoulder discomfort when using the barbell, or they have a little bit of range of motion issues. You can hold the TRX, modify its height, and then pull with a neutral grip, which is usually a lot more accommodating for the shoulders. Now, that's the most popular variation out there. I would highly suggest trying it out and adding it into your program to see what you like better, the TRX or the barbell. And that wraps up our inverted row tutorial. This is one of the best movements for accruing extra pulling volume on your back days. And it's also a great variation for every fitness level, especially beginners who are trying to master the chin up and pull up. If you wanna read more on the inverted row and read our full written guide, be sure to check us out at Barbend and Google Barbend and Inverted Row.